Beneath the scaffolding and crumbling bricks lies a story. It had a dirt floor. It was anything but beautiful, even in its best days. A story of not only the Queen City's last operating blacksmith shop, but more importantly, the blacksmith himself, Edmund Rudnicki. He was just a, a terrifically hard worker. Ed's son Paul holds the memories and images of his father close to his heart. The elder Rudnicki passed away in 2001 at the age of 82. And Paul says he lived a life doing what he loved. He was an industrial blacksmith, and his specialty was uh, sharpening tools, making tools. It was just a pleasure to watch him at work, taking you know a, a piece of flat metal, and when he was done, having a construction tool. Paul says his father was a proud smithy and a perfectionist. He wouldn't leave that shop, even if it was late at night, until you know that. Even if it was just a you know. Uh, a construction tool, it had to be just right. And if, if he had to warm it up and do it again, he warmed it up and do it again. A perfectionist from day one. He had started um, in the early 50s doing a lot of work on the lakes freighters. In fact, in the early 70s, a freighter came up the Buffalo River with a rush order to repair some chains, a ship that would soon become famous or rather infamous. The Edmund Fitzgerald, yeah. yeah. That's right. That very same ship sunk a short time later on Lake Superior as the gales of November came early, as the song goes. He did some work on the chains for the Edmund Fitzgerald, and he was always worried that one of the chains gave way and he had done something wrong. To his relief, his repairs had nothing to do with the disaster, but Rudnicki's skills were also put to work on some other famous projects, according to historian and preservationist Tim Thielman. He did belt buckles for uh, the Gemini and Apollo programs for astronauts. Which all plays into his passion for these buildings, which are now at the center of controversy. But he says they once sat at the center of commerce. This set of buildings right here that we're looking at that are the subject of this eminent domain hearing, they're the sole remaining buildings from the Erie Canal era on the Buffalo waterfront. According to the city records, 110 South Park Avenue was built in 1852 as a bakery and is one of the only pre-Civil War era buildings near the foot of Main Street. 118 South Park Avenue was built in 1869 as the Brown and McCutcheon Brass Foundry. And up until 23 years ago, it was Rudnicki's Buffalo Blacksmith Company, which he operated for nearly five decades. And that is something that both Thielman and Paul Rudnicki say needs to be preserved. They're the reason we created the Cobblestone Historic District. That's a part of Buffalo that we really shouldn't let go of.